In my last video, I showed you how I shot a bakery masterclass all by myself as a videographer. And in this video, I want to show you how to step up from that and shoot a high-end Christmas commercial as a cinematographer with a crew of 20 people. All the beginning from the start, the conception, till the end to release of the commercial. This Christmas commercial is 60 seconds long in total, but it took weeks and months of preparation. It's something that I would have not been able to shoot by myself. It needed a team and I had a full camera team and a full lighting team available. And just a note, this was a spec project. At the end of the video, I'll review what I think of spec projects and if they are worth doing. I met director Sonia Amini during a networking event early last year, the Cine Circle Short Film Funding Summit. I was kind of sneaky as a cinematographer going into a networking event that's specifically for producers and directors, but it was good for me since there was no competition cinematographer-wise. Sonia and I connected quite well and stayed in touch. And then later that year, we met up and discussed potential projects that we can work on together. Hi, my name is Sonia Mini. I'm a director and producer, and I'm the founder of Compact Film, and I'm the director of the Spec Ad. My best friend is a writer, and he wrote this uh, sketch, comedy sketch, and I thought, why we are not using it to make a Spec Ad? Usually you start with the product, and then from the product you find the idea. In this case, we had like a comic sketch and we tried to find a brand that could fit into the comic sketch. It was a little bit like a way around. The concept of which was a couple is getting ready for Christmas. A girlfriend is urging her boyfriend to pack up the Christmas presents, which he does in a sort of Tarantino style montage. And after he's done, he looks at his work and realizes that he's forgotten to put the tags on the presents so nobody knows which present is for who. I really connected with that story just because I am very story driven in either field, commercial or narrative. So having a small story within a commercial is a great opportunity. And then right around September 2023, we went into pre-production. There were a lot of things to figure out as we didn't have any budget. We did try to collaborate with other production companies, but that didn't work out so well except when we came in contact with Duolium. Duolium is a rental and production house based in East London. They agreed to provide all the lighting equipment and even camera equipment for this shoot. That meant for us we were able to shoot on a red Komodo with Vespid Prime lenses. And on top of that, I provided my DZO Cine Zooms. For this video, I went to Duolium and interviewed Manuel the Gaffer a bit later in the video. The next big challenge was a location and then also good production design for that location, as without proper production design, a Christmas commercial would look terrible. Luckily, Sonia had access to an amazing location through her day job in one of the skyscrapers in the center of London. We decided to use this meeting slash lunch slash party room as our main location, a living room, as it looked very posh. It had a fireplace, a TV, and was also just very big, high ceiling, which was perfect for film lights and film crew. Since we had such an easy access to the location, we did multiple location scouts, and I was able to do something that I love to do in the preparation, but I am not always able to do just because it takes a lot of time at the location, which is filming rehearsals. I was able to use the Artemis Pro app on my iPad to dial in the camera that we're using, plus the focal lengths of lenses that we're using, to then shoot stills and videos of rehearsals that we're doing at the location. This gives Sonia and me the freedom to actually be creative, experiment around with the story and the overall flow of the story as much as we wanted to, just because we didn't have the pressure of being on set and in the moment. The most important thing I think is like people need to see what is like, what they are doing, what they are committing to. So like the pitch deck, a treatment, it's very useful so people can see like visually what, uh, what the, the final result in a way. And I think what helped uh, a lot is the shoot test. Uh, they help people to understand what we are going to do. I really struggle sometimes to talk with a director about the story and storyboarding and shot list, just because it's words that we're saying. But if I can just take out my iPad and actually show you the frame, or we can experiment together as a director and cinematographer, it, it just gives you so much more freedom and so much more creative expression and both understand the shot really clearly. I even edited the videos that we shot together so we get an understanding of the overall flow of the video 
what we need to shorten, what we need to lengthen, which beats. We also had multiple team calls in which we also discussed with production design what fairy lights we should use as a lot of commercial lights flicker on camera. And we also had an issue with the TV in the room which flickered, so we needed to figure out what we can do there. The location had an actual fireplace, but unfortunately we were not allowed to light it just because it didn't seem to have any gas. And two big issues came up as well during the location scouts. One was that the ceiling lights were actually lights and not windows, so they needed to be turned off, but as this was a skyscraper building, there were no light switches on the walls, so we needed to ask the building administration to turn them off on the day. And then also one of the walls was just windows and it was a huge room. It was a 12 meter wall of just windows, which we needed to black out. So we decided to shoot beginning of November, which was quite last minute for a project like this. And also we changed our plan from shooting a night shoot to a day for night shoot, which I think everybody appreciated. On the preparation day, I went straight to Dualium's uh, offices and help them load in all of the kit into their production van and bring it to a location, unload, which is quite a task, especially since our location was on the 10th floor and we had to go through multiple security checks. I then spent the rest of the day unloading the kit, building whatever kit I was able to build already, and also blacking out all of the windows, which took forever as we unfortunately only had some small bin bags available. We later purchased some bigger bags but initially it took us 10 minutes per window to black it out. We also built a curtain with C-stands, which I initially thought might not really work, but it turned out quite well. And with the blackouts and the curtains, it really did look like we're shooting in a big living room during night. During the prep day, the art department team also built the set, which was amazing to see come alive and gave me confidence for the next day. Unfortunately, we were very focused on the shoot itself, so we actually didn't take much BTS pictures. But I was very happy with how the production day itself went. As I had both a big lighting team and a camera crew, I was able to focus my efforts on actually the image and directing my technical crew. We mainly had three setups. The first one, which was for the in an opening scene, when the girlfriend comes in through the door and the boyfriend sits on the couch and is playing video games. The second one is the montage scene where the boyfriend is fanatically packing up the presents. And the third one was the ending scene by the tree when they're looking at the presents and then their fight breaks out. For the first setup we used a Nanlite 90 with a spotlight mount to shine some light through the corridor and make it look like light is coming from the outside. We even used the gobo on the light. We then put a power tube in the fireplace and put a fire effect on it. Though in retrospect, I think it looks a bit too pinkish. For the TV, we actually put green tape around the edges and a green cross of tape in the middle. So in post-production, we would be able to track it more easily. But we still needed to have some light come from the TV. So we used a Aperture Nova with a TV effect on, I think, 1% because it was so strong on the ground just in front of Vincent, which worked quite well. I then put a 600 Aperture fixture with a lantern and bounced that against the wall to just raise the room ambient light. And then we put an Iron F21C on a boom arm and shone it directly above Vincent. We also had a second Amaran to shine on the tree and another light mat for Mumbi once she approached the couch. Throughout the shoot we had tons and tons of practical lights scattered throughout the scene, which was mostly the production lines work. But we also used a few Aperture MCs throughout the scene in the background to give it even more background bokeh. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk to my gaffer about what we did with the lighting and hear what he thought about it. Um, my name is Manuel Suarez. I'm the co-owner and co-founder of Duelium. Our slogan is like the Latin rental house within London. We have a, an specialist in within lighting, but we strive to help professionals of all levels from independent to full-on productions achieve their goals. And I was the gaffer on wrapping. The amazing thing of Christmas commercials is that everything's motivated, right? Like, we had so many practicals. So we're just accentuating that. You can get away with a lot more creative lighting on them. That's why like, the look we got was quite creamy, just because we could just kind of have fixtures doing a lot of different things. 
and that always makes your image look more dynamic, right? Because you're engaging, for example, we're engaging the background with that fire we had, you know, which in, unless you go a fireplace on location, it'd be really hard to do otherwise. The second lighting setups were mainly around the montage and they did switch around a bit, but we wanted to create a little bit of a highlight on Vincent and create a little bit more surrealistic in his head type of feeling. So I had a strong backlight on him, a nice side light, and then it was a lot of camera magic with crash zooms and good operating to get the feeling and energy right. And the last setup was a bit of a mix between the first two. I still wanted to pop out the subject a little bit more, so I kept some backlight, even though it was a bit more unnatural and then also lit up the room in the background again. Probably my favorite shot cinematography-wise is the last shot, even though it's only at the end. But the practical lights from the snowball were just amazing with all of the background kind of blurry. And that was it. The day ended quite late for all of us because we also had to unpack and redress the entire room to how it originally was. So I ended up leaving it with the core team at around 1 a.m. As I was the cinematographer in this one, I was actually not that much involved in the post-production. Sonia did send me a couple drafts throughout the editing process, and I had some feedback on those drafts, but ultimately it was Sonia's decision. I'm very happy how it turned out, especially since it's within 60 seconds, and the earlier drafts were 1 minute 30 seconds, which I thought was a bit too long. However, I insisted on color grading the footage, as it was also my first time color grading wet footage. And I was really amazed by the 16-bit color range that the Komodo gave me. So you know, I went through a couple of color grading drafts. Initially, it was a bit more warmer and yellowish, but I'm glad Sonia pressed me to make it more neutral. And I think it looks much more high-end and modern that way. And lastly, there was the score and the sound design, which I wasn't involved in, but I think I gave Sonia some suggestions. And I'm again very happy how it, that turned out. We released the commercial quite late on the 23rd of December, but still before Christmas. And I'd actually be very interested in what you think about the final video. I will play it in full length with sound at the end of this video, or you can just go to my website and check it out. Finally, I want to reflect a little bit on what we could have done better or what I would change, and also a bit of thoughts on spec projects in general. This was by far the biggest spec project I've shot from a scale perspective with about 20 people in total being involved. And the more people, the more complicated it gets, but I'm really surprised how well everything worked out. But it was also very much thanks to Sonia's efforts. And again, Duolium played a huge part in bringing the whole production to the next level with supplying the kit, but also through their efforts with their amazing lighting team. They were super hardworking and never bat an eye to do anything. Spec projects are a bit complicated and I actually wanted to ask Manuel and Sonia what they think about spec projects and if they are worth doing. I think they are a good way to gain experience and to... You are allowed to make mistakes because there are not a lot of money involved and you can learn and so when you are with clients, you are on, on big set with big budgets, you... I'm not saying that you are not doing mistakes, but at least like, you have the experience and the confidence. One of the most important things in industry is that you need to be aware of not always working for free, but you need to also know when to say yes and not be afraid of working for free, if that makes sense. Because when you balance that, that's when, that's when you can grow quicker, right? Because your, your personal brand gets out there more, the more you work. And then if it so happened that we won an award with this um, spec, then all of our names go up, right? Like I think Manuel raises a very good point here. It's not about working for free for everything, but finding out what's worth for working for free and if you can get something from it. When you, you collaborate with someone, it's kind of like putting a seed. Uh, and this seed can become a big tree. It's about personal relationship, relationship with people. People usually work always with the same people. There is a reason. Uh, because it's very stressful sometimes, so you need someone that your way of speaking, acting is, is matching and you can understand, it's about understanding and, uh, and liking each other. So more you work with a person and better you know the person and better and stronger the duo, the relationship uh, will, will, will become. Ultimately, I think spec projects are very worth it if you're also telling people about it, showing it to producers 
and if it's with the right people. If it's with people who themselves don't really show effort to make it good, then it's just a waste of time or really a waste of energy as you will get more frustrated as those projects come along. But with the right people, it's great to build alliances and push yourself forward, push yourself to do something new. I tried out new things. I tried crash zooms. I tried shooting on the red camera using nanite fixtures. So there was a lot of fun for me to actually do this project. People sometimes they want to step in in a um, higher role, like from uh, second AC to first AC or from gaffer into DEPing. So um, they are happy to, to help. I also really tried to focus on improving my storytelling skills with the camera. Even though I'm just a DP and sometimes it becomes a really just technical role, I, I still believe it's very important to understand storytelling and understand how the camera influences storytelling. I probably could have been more involved with the art department, but they were just doing a phenomenal job by themselves. And I'm not that talented in doing art design. So I'm always super happy when I have a production designer. If this shoot had some budget, I would probably insist on getting some monitors that are calibrated or that I'm used to. We used a port keys monitor, which I haven't used before. And I really like the small HD monitors, especially with the new EL zone exposure tools. But I mainly use the small monitor on the red and my eye to judge the images. And that's not my preferred way to do it. That is the story of how we shot this commercial. And at the end of this video, I will play out the entire clip and judge for yourself what you think. I would be curious to know. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more stories like this and more insights into the high-end film industry and how you can step up yourself. On the press. How am I meant to know if this now, is for my mother or your mother? Well, that's probably your mother. What? You <laughs> <laughs>